I have something pretty cool here. Uh, this is just my Glock. It's a Gen 3. It was a Glock 22, but I put a Glock 17 slide on it, and I would throw a barrel. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is this. The Roni CG2, which is a... Some of you may, may be familiar with the Roni carbine stock kit, which takes a Glock, puts it inside, and turns it into an SBR. CAA realized that there's a much larger market if they don't make an SBR. Now, they have a new version that has a stabilizing brace, so it still keeps your Glock as a pistol. But this one I was interested in because it turns your Glock into a rifle. Legal rifle, no NFA, no tax stamp because of this. A 16-inch Glock barrel. Uh, I don't know who makes this, but it's made in Austria. And I test fired it the other day in the Glock. And yes, it cycles. Um, some of you may be familiar with suppressors and having a weight at the end of the barrel. If you don't have a Nielsen device, it doesn't allow the gun to function because of the tilting barrel and all that. Somehow, this thing can function. I don't understand the magic. I think it has something to do with what's happening here. Um, if you can see, it chamfers down. It narrows the barrel a little bit, gets fatter, and then has a, a space right here and a little thing there. I'm not sure what that's for. The instructions on the Roni kit were a little bit vague. Uh, it said part one, it, was a, it looked like a Xerox of a Xerox. Um, so it took a little bit of trial and error for me to figure out how this thing works. Um, pretty much the kit comes like this, okay? Forget the optic and forget the, the light. <clears throat> These screws, you unscrew them, that's obvious and you can pop these pins out. Now, they're captive and they don't fall out, which is nice. And I figured out, okay, this slides forward to unlock this half, but I couldn't figure out how to slide this thing back. And there's a, a button back here, which is what the length of pull adjustment's for. So you pull the stock out, and then you can move this little collar. <clears throat> that collar holds this part uh, closed. So then you can open up and put the Glock inside. So it's real simple. Check your Glock, make sure it's empty, and take it apart. All we're gonna do is we swap out barrels. Make sure you put this barrel in first, otherwise you're making an SBR. What I mean is make sure you have this before you put the gun inside here. Otherwise, with a short barrel, this becomes a short barrel rifle. And it comes with this little charging handle. Now, there are little plastic lines that line up with the factory grooves of the, of the slide. Now, you may notice my Glock does not have a front or a rear sight. That's not required of this kit. Uh, that's just because I had a ALG six-second mount on here. And it's easier with the sights are not on there to take the slide on and off. <clears throat> slide it down. Um, it does cover up a little bit of the, of the ejection, uh, ejector, I should say, uh, but it, it seems to function. Uh, so then, when you're putting this inside, stick the barrel in. I kind of lift this up a little bit and slide the Glock in between this gap here. Because if you don't, and you put it in, you can't fold the, the half of the gun over the grip. So get the grip underneath there, kind of slide it in. And then the gun should sit perfectly. There's, you'll notice there's a cutout, there's a cutout for the trigger. There's a little slot that locks into the accessory locking point, the Picatinny rail, and the charging handle stops right before hitting this ejection chute. So then once that's all in there, you close it, make sure everything closes nicely. You shouldn't require a lot of force. Um, sometimes if this is not sitting just perfectly lined up right there, like with the locking lug, um, then this doesn't really close quite as nicely and it's kind of hard to close this in. If that's the case, don't force it open back up and check, make sure the Glock lines up perfectly inside. So you just slide it, close that, slide that, close that, and then you can screw these screws in. 
This one's easy to do with your fingers. This one is a little bit recessed, so it's easier with a screwdriver. And that's it. Now you have a Roni carbine rifle. Uh, this grip, you push this button here and it unlocks. If you push this button here, that's what slides it off of the picatinny rail. And it can go 90 degrees, 45, or collapse completely. To activate the gun, you have these extended charging handle wings out here for right, right hand or left hand shooters. Uh, the one thing that I don't like about this, just because of my hand size, I can't really hit the magazine release uh, the way this is set up. I might have to go with an extended uh, larger sort of competition mag release that comes back further towards my thumb because with the stock in here, I can't, it's a little awkward for me to adjust my grip and hit that magazine release. But now I have a pistol carbine that I can run in USPSA new pistol caliber carbine division. So I'm very, very eager to try this out. Uh, there's a lot of accessory rails on here, Picatinny on the sides, and they're, they're metal. This is metal. Everything else is polymer. You do have a little trigger guard safety thing, so that prevents anything from getting into the trigger. It doesn't actually stop the gun from firing. I could get, reach in here kind of and, and activate the trigger safety mechanism, but you do have a, a, a physical block to prevent things from going into the trigger guard. Um, it's very lightweight. I haven't measured the weight of this. Let's go do that right now. I brought out a kitchen scale, so I turned it on, zeroed, put the carbine on there. Five pounds, 14 and a half ounces. Now I want to compare that to another pistol caliber carbine, my sub 2000. Four pounds, 15.6 ounces, so it's a whole pound lighter. Um, the reason why I brought this out is from a standpoint of usability uh, having been able to put your Glock inside a chassis and make it into a rifle is, is cool but this setup don't include the optic or the laser light just the kit with the barrel is almost $600 um, not bad for a pistol caliber carbine you already got the Glock you already have the magazines you're really kind of set to go <clears throat> However, for an MSRP of $500, you can have this. Now, that doesn't include the optic and the optic mount, but other than that, pretty much this is almost stock with a few accessories like ladder rail covers and M-lock covers and this little hand stop and the little fat charging handle back here. However, just the gun alone is ready to go for 500 bucks and you can find them cheaper. Uh, and it's ready to go with to shoot Glock mags. That's a whole separate gun. With this setup, you have to take apart your Glock, put that huge barrel in it, put the Glock back together again, and then shove it inside and then shoot it. This one, you just unfold it and it's ready to go. No assembly required, right? So there's trade-offs. This is a little bit bigger, bulkier. Um, some people like that. Some people, like this is, some people think this is like uh, a broomstick, if you will. Tuscan sand, Tuscan Raider, you know, stick. It's real thin. Um, I like it because I can really control this barrel and shoot it pretty quickly. Uh, and it folds. So huge, huge bonuses to Caltech for that. But those are obvious reasons. The folding is really cool. Um, this is cool. I'm going to try it in USPSA and see how it runs. It is really bulky. I mean, this is a gigantic futuristic space gun looking kind of thing. And I dig it. I actually might crisscross of this thing. You can. Uh, the barrel, I'm not sure. It seems to be listing a little bit to the left. Uh, but if I flex the, the Glock a little bit, I can center it. <clears throat> so that's a little bit disconcerting. It's going to affect accuracy. However, this is a pistol caliber carbine. I'm not going to be trying to take 100, 200 yard shots with this. I could try it, but that's not what this is for. This is for me, this is something to use for close range shooting. Anyways. So going back to the Rooney carbine, it's cool. I shot the other day and I did notice I did have an, a fail to extract uh, piece of brass got stuck, sort of a stove pipe. Um, that's the one downside to this setup is that clearing a malfunction in this is, is a little bit complicated. Um, 
just like any rifle, you gotta take the magazine out, rack the charging handle to try and eject whatever spent brass. I got, I had one that got kind of stuck in the groove of the slide and it wouldn't come out. So I had to lock the slide back and sort of fish it out. Uh, you do have, this comes with it, this little spare magazine holder thing right here. So you can have a spare magazine back here. So once this is out, you would push this magazine catch right here, pull that out, go in here, and then go back to shooting again. Other features of the, of the Roni carbine kit, you have a one, I think it's a four position stock, two, three, four, four position stock. You do have a cheek comb riser. So I guess if you have a real tall optic, you can set it up to your height, to your preference. Um, it's a little bit further back than I would like on the stock. I want to stick my face more forward. Like I run my ARs, I run most of the charging handle, and this is just barely touching my cheek. So I kind of have to pull my head back to really minute, to utilize this cheek rest. So I don't really use it. I keep it down and then stick my face as far forward as I can. Uh, personal preference. So I'm running a Miopta optic on here. Uh, so far so good. The little plates that have the name kind of fell out and the battery's already dying and I haven't really used it that much so it just may be a, a bad battery I'm gonna change it out and use it some more on this carbine and see if how well it works at USPSA if you want to take the gun out unscrew those screws very important remember to pull the stock out otherwise you can't pull this rear collar back pull this one out slide this forward and then the hood opens up and you can tilt the gun slide it out and now you have a ridiculously long 16 inch barrel Glock 17 now I don't know if you can see it there but the this is this is wider than this and I think that's to help center the barrel with the slide so as it closes this part is almost the same size as the opening in the slide. So it kind of centers and holds the barrel in place. Something else I forgot to mention. Um, with the Glock, this is set up designed for a Glock 17. Now, Generation 2 will not work because it doesn't have this locking lug right here for an accessory. Uh, and then if you have a customized Glock with some custom serrations, this part of the charging handle probably won't work because it is designed to work with the factory serrations. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that an issue is, <coughs> I tried it and this will not work with a Glock 34, 35 the longer barrel version. Now you could stick the barrel in it and it will probably work. The problem comes up is when you put the gun inside, the extra long barrel sits on top of this and it's not supposed to. Um, Cause on the Glock 17, the barrel just kind of stops right here. I'll show you. Lock in there, <clears throat> everything's all lined up. Now you can see how the barrel and the slide stop before it hits this piece of plastic. On a Glock 34, 35, the barrel is too long and it hits that, and so it actually sits on top and it doesn't line up and everything kind of doesn't want to work. Uh, I tried making, I tried just shoving it in there and forcing it, and when I did, the slide would not work. I couldn't uh, charge the handle back and operate the slide. 
So just things to know, food for thought. Uh, if you're a USPSA competitive shooter and you're shooting with a Glock 34 or a 35, this won't work for you. You need to get a Glock 17 slide uh, in order for you, in order for you to use, utilize this carbine rifle kit.